I will call the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen to order at 7.30 p.m. The prayer will be offered by Deputy City Clerk Judith Boilo and Alderman Gidge will lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty to manage the affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with a spirit of unity and understanding which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all our fellow citizens. So help us, God. Amen. Amen. I have pledged allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Wilshire. Here. Alderman Gidge. Here. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Present. Alderman Dowd. Present. Alderman Clee. Here. Alderman Laws. Here. Alderman Lopez. Here. Alderman Karen. Here. Alderwoman Kelly. Here. Alderman Jetty. Here. Alderwoman Melisi Gola. Present. Alderman Tenza. Present. Alderman Schmidt. Here. Alderman O'Brien. Present. Alderman McCarthy. Present. 15 present. Also present, Mayor James Donchus and Corporation Counsel Stephen A. Bolton. Does the mayor wish to address the board? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Well, first, I would like to welcome Dr. Mosley and our friends from the school board and the school department uh, to the meeting. And I understand that uh, Susan Porter is going to be sworn in as the uh, most recent member of the school board. I want to congratulate her, and I'm glad they came here for the swearing in. Um, there are a couple things on the agenda that I wanted to mention. First, the ambulance contract is up for renewal under communications. The contract, of course, is with AMR. They've been the ambulance company for quite some time. They've done a very good job. This is f for a one-year extension of the contract. They um, uh, have been recommended, the, the extension has been unanimously recommended by the committee that uh, is in charge of supervising and evaluating their performance, and they have done a very good job, as I said, particularly with respect to the Safe Stations program, where Chris Daywaz has been a particular leader, and I will mention that a little bit more in just a moment. Uh, and so I hope that you will agree with the committee and approve the extension of the AMR contract. Coming up this weekend, on Saturday, we have the Walk Against Heroin uh, beginning at 11 o'clock at Greeley Park, which comes down to City Hall and then goes back to Greeley Park. It's led by a woman, a Nashua citizen, Darlene Pina, who has been leading all these marches, and they take place several times a year. It's a very inspiring event. A lot of people usually show up. Many people, many families who've been touched very personally by the heroin crisis, by the opioid crisis. And so if you can make it, I think it, it's worth attending and showing your support for the many people who are working against opioids and who have been tragically affected by the uh, opioid crisis. Along those lines, we have had, and I want to re wanted to update you on current such this current status, uh, we have had, unfortunately, five fat fatal ODs this year, which is, excuse me, this month, the month of March, which is not a good month. Uh, although for the first three months of the year, we're on par the same as last year with eight uh, fatalities. Um, I, but we are doing the right thing with the Safe Stations program. Uh, we meet every two weeks to evaluate the program and to try to improve it. Uh, the fact-based approach that we are developing along with AMR in terms of evaluating it has begun, and they are, AMR has been very good in developing statistics and information regarding the people who report and those who report to safe stations and, and, uh, and, and in many different respects. 
And one thing that the analysis is showing, and we're continually trying to refine it, is that the, it seems that the likelihood of a person who reports to safe stations is 62%, the likelihood that they will OD after the report is reduced by 62% 62 as opposed to those who have not reported to safe stations. Another thing that seems clear is that, of course, as we, as we know, every single death is a tragedy, but very few people, a few but not many people have succumbed to a fatal overdose after reporting to safe stations. And the, it seems very obvious that the chances of succumbing to a fatal overdose are much, much reduced but for those who do report to safe stations. And of course, this is due to the efforts of many people, including many organizations, many people, uh, Harbor Homes, the fire department, um, the to AMR, everybody who's providing treatment. So it's a big group community effort, which I think despite the current, despite the fact that ODs and some fatalities continue, is doing a good job. The national trends are that overdoses and deaths were up significantly between 2016 and 2017. That was not the case in Nashua. Uh, thank God that we were able to hold stable numbers as opposed to going up like much of the rest of the nation. The fire department and Harbor Homes are continuing to get inquiries from around the country regarding the program and asking advice and how other parts of other cities from Florida to Rhode Island and other places could start and initiate a program. So I think it has gained an important reputation and so I believe and I know we're doing the right thing. <coughs> so I appreciate, I want to update you and say that I appreciate all your support with respect to our ongoing efforts. Um, this past weekend, we had the uh, March for Our Lives staged by some of our high school students, Ben Talersky and others, Shoshana, older woman Shoshana Kelly, and was, extreme, was very active in organizing that. It was a great event. We had, I don't know, five, six hundred people out in front of City Hall, the biggest really rally I've, I've, I've ever witnessed. The I think people were inspired, and the t the leader but leadership by the t by the young people, by the high school students, was uh, extremely impressive. And I have to think that over time, this will have an effect in helping to bring meaningful reform to our gun laws and reduce the rates of uh, uh, gun fatalities. So I want to congratulate everybody who was involved in that effort. Finally, we also had the Mary Goyette lunch on Sunday, the fifth annual uh, Mary Goyette arts lunch. A number of you attended, Alderman McCarthy, Alderwoman Milici Golia, and I think others, Alderman Ken Gidge, and probably others. Uh, it was, we raised some money for the endowment for the Performing Arts Center. We had some great winners. The winners of the awards were Paul Shea, Michael Buckley, PRG, Gal a PRG store right next door, and uh, some of the some of the picker artists who who uh, were able to successfully move from the picker building to elsewhere in the mill yard. So overall, the event was really fun. We had a great turnout, and I think it's a, a wonderful event for the city and. I'm glad that uh, at least some of the board members were able to attend. And that's all I have, Mr. President. There are any responses to the remarks of the mayor? <coughs> Alderman Melzigolia. Yes, I would um, just like to join him in congratulating Ben and Alderwoman um, Kelly in organizing the march. I heard it was very successful also. And, um, and I think that the parents of our students should be proud of the leadership 
they are demonstrating. And I would just add to the mayor's comments about the luncheon that we also celebrated Mary's birthday. But I won't tell you how old she is. You'll have to ask her. Alderwoman Kelly. I just want to um, respond as well. I think the leadership of the students was just so inspiring. Uh, but also just the help that we had along the way from the city. The police department was incredible. Um, people in the city clerk's office just really came together and helped um, get that off the ground. So I appreciate everything. Alderwoman Clee. Um, I was unable to attend the, the march, but I heard it was incredible. that You did a wonderful job, Shannon. Um, the other thing is I wanted to mention about the uh, awareness march that um, the mayor had, had spoken about. Um, I've spoken to, to Darlene, and I really do think it's important for as many of us that can go, should go. It, it's, it's an awareness is healing, and it's to help break down walls to show that um, it's not something we have to be ashamed of. It's something we have to bring out in the open, and we have to talk, and um, it takes a lot of brave people to do that. And I went last year in the pouring rain, <laughs> and it was absolutely amazing to see these people carrying pictures of their families and literally telling their stories. And this year they're going to do, um, they're going to put a line across and, and put pictures on it of all the people that have been lost and so on, and I, I think it would be a great support. Hopefully the sun will be out this year. <laughs> Any further remarks? Alderman Lopez. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Um, at the March for Our Lives rally, the police were very, very professional. They were also very engaging and polite. And I think it was very reassuring to the public. I think it's a great example of positive police presence where a lot of people who might have been looking, you know, a little bit anxiously around felt very much like their police were there serving them, protecting them, and all that. So I just wanted to give credit to the police for how they handled that um, in particular. Um, and I also wanted to um, echo the sentiments um, about the Awareness is Healing Walk. Mayor Dantas, you might, you might have some competition for the number of people who are at that because the first year, if I remember correctly, there were like 800 people. So you might see just as much of a turnout um, as we saw um, last weekend. And I think that's the takeaway that the aldermen should be looking at is the opioid crisis is a tragedy. People are struggling for recovery every day. Um, and we are losing people that are, we can't afford to. They're people with dreams, they're people with you know, families, people that could be leaders. And one of the, the things that I've seen at the Awareness is Healing Walk and in our own neighborhoods is more and more people who are choosing recovery and that are supporting each other in it are becoming leaders and they're people who may at once have been identified as part of the statistical problem are stepping forward to become part of the solution. So when you see the, when you go to the Awareness is Healing Walk, it's not just about everything that's lost, it's about the resolution for what we're going to do. Programs like Revive, um, Gatehouse, the necessary pieces to, con to help people rebuild their lives, those are born out of these kind of walks. So I encourage everybody to attend so that you can be part of that. Recognition period. There were none. Reading the minutes of previous meetings and public hearing. If there are no objections, the minutes of the Board of Aldermen meetings of March 6, 2018, March 14, 2018, and those of the public hearing conducted by the Human Affairs Committee on March 12, 2018, will be accepted, placed on file, and the readings will be suspended. Communications requiring only procedural actions and written reports from liaisons. There are none. Period for public comment relative to items expected to be acted upon this evening. No one has signed up. Communications requiring final approval. Communication from Mayor Jim Donches relative to ambulance contract extension, value zero, zero dollars, Department 152 fire. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to make a motion to accept and place on file and authorize a one-year extension to the ambulance agreement with American Medical Response of Massachusetts Incorporated. Motion is to accept, place on file, and authorize the one-year extension to the ambulance contract with American Medical Response of Massachusetts Incorporated. Is there any discussion of that motion? Alderman Lopez? The cost is zero, but the value is priceless. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed?
And that motion carries. Communication from Patric Patric Patricia D. Pietsu, city clerk, relative to return of votes, special municipal election held March 20th, 2018. Uh, Alderwoman Karen. Yes, thank you. I'd like to make a motion that the results recorded on the city clerk's record of returns for the Board of Education race at the special munis municipal election on March 20th, 2018, be declared final and conclusive, and that Susan Porter, having received the largest number of votes cast, be declared elected to the Office of Board of Education for a term to expire January 5th, 2020. Motion is that the results recorded on the city clerk's record of returns for the Board of Education race at the special municipal election held on March 20th, 2018 be declared final and conclusive, and that Susan Porter, having received the largest number of votes cast, be declared elected to the Office of Board of Education for a term to expire January 5th, 2020. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and Susan Porter is elected to the Board of Education for a term to expire January 5th, 2020. Ms. Porter, would you come forward for the oath of office? If there are no objections, the rules will be so far suspended as to allow for the introduction of a communication received after the agenda was prepared. Communication from Mayor Jim Donches relative to KRT appraisal contract. All the women will sure. Thank you. I move to accept, place on file, and award the contract to KRT appraisal in the amount of $500,000. Motion is to accept, place on file, and award the contract to KRT appraisal in the amount of $500,000. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Petitions? There are none. Nominations, appointments, and elections. To the Honorable Board of Aldermen, I have this day appointed Anita Arden Kelly of 15 Tyler Street, Nashua, New Hampshire, to the Office of the Environment and Energy Committee for a term to expire March 31st, 2020, and respectfully request that the appointment be confirmed. If there are no objections, the appointment by the mayor will be accepted as read and referred to the Personnel and Administrative Affairs Committee. Reports of committees. If there are no objections, the report of the Budget Committee of March 15, 2018 will be accepted and placed on file. If there's no objection, the report of the Finance Committee of March 21st, 2018 will be accepted and placed on file. If there are no objections, the report of the Human Affairs Committee of March 12, 2018 will be accepted on, placed on file. And if there are no objections, the report of the Planning and Economic Development Committee of March 16, 2018 will be accepted and placed on file. Confirmation of the mayor's appointments? There are none. Unfinished business resolutions? Second reading of resolution 18-007 authorizing the filing of application and execution of grant agreements with the U.S. Department of Transportation for grants under the Urban Mass Transportation Act of 1964 as amended for fiscal years 2019 and 2020. Alderman Dowd? Yes, a motion for final passage of R18007. Motion is for final passage of R18007. Is there any discussion of that motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and R18007 is adopted. Second reading of resolution 18-009 relative to the transfer of city matching funds in the amount of $2,985 from police grant activity FY 2018 Violence Against Women Grant Program 
into police grant activities FY 2017 Violence Against Women grant program. Honorable Woman Wilshire. Thank you. I move for final passage of Resolution 18009. Motion is for final passage of R18009. Is there any discussion of that motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries and R18009 is adopted. Second reading of resolution 18-010, authorizing the city to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the city of Manchester, New Hampshire, regarding a remote dispatch center. Alderwoman Kelly. Thank you. I move for final passage of R18010. Motion is for final passage of R18010. Is there any discussion of that motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries and R18010 is adopted. Second reading of resolution 18-012 authorizing the city of Nashua to enter into contracts with Nashua Community College, Riviera University, Town of Hudson, Town of Merrimack, and the Plus Company for Transit Services. Alderwoman Lizzie Goya. Yes, I move for final passage of R18012. Motion is for final passage of R18012. Is there discussion of that motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and R18012 is adopted. Second reading of resolution 18-013 relative to the acceptance and appropriations of $378,117 from the state of New Hampshire Department of Transportation into Transit Grant Activity, Transit Service Expansion. Old Woman Harriet Gethard. I move for final passage of R18013. Motion is for final passage of R18013. Is there any discussion of that motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and R18013 is adopted. Second reading of resolution 18-014 relative to the transfer of up to $50,000 from Department 194, contingency account 70150, contingency negotiations into various salaries and wages accounts. Alderman Dowd. Yes, motion for final passage of R18-014. Motion is for final passage of R18-014. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries and R18014 is adopted. Unfinished business ordinances. Second reading ordinance 18-006, expanding the tax increment financing development district under RSA 162-K and NRO 295-11, established by ordinance 03, Dash 171 and replacing the DAS, the tax increment financing development program and financing plan adopted by resolution 0 197 and resolution 04 58. All the women, Lizzie Goya. Yes, I move for final passage of 018006. Motion is for final passage of 018006. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries and 018006 is adopted. New business resolutions. First reading of resolution 18-020, authorizing the mayor to apply for and expand the community development block grant CDBG in home investment partnership programs for fiscal year 2019. Additional sponsors, Alderwoman Lizzie Golia, Alderman, Alderwoman Karen, Alderwoman Schmidt, Alderman O'Brien, Alderwoman Kelly, Alderman Lopez, Alderwoman Clee, Alderman Dowd, and Alderwoman Harry Gathright, and Alderman Laws. Did I miss anybody? If there are no objections, the first reading of R18020 will be accepted will be referred to the Human Affairs Committee and a public hearing will be scheduled for Monday, April 9th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Aldermanic Chamber. New business ordinances. First reading of Ordinance 18-010, 
amendments to the explosive material code. Additional sponsors? 018-010 will be assigned to the Planning and Economic Development Committee. Period for general public comment. No one has signed up. Remarks by members of the Board of Aldermen. I'll start over here. Alderman Jetty. Uh, I wanted to uh, make several comments about things that we've done uh, tonight. Um, the uh, number one, the special election. Um, I wanted to, you know, several people have talked to me about the special election and when I voted, uh, the people that work at my ward um, uh, expressed, uh, several people expressed concerns about the way that we uh, uh, select people to replace people who have resigned or uh, you know, where there's a vacancy. And um, you know, the ward, people that work at the ward were telling me that they were, you know, we all know that they work from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m., so that's 14 hours. Um, plus, they have to get there before to set up, and uh, they're there after to take down. Uh, some of them were, you know, they were looking for people. They were short of people, so some people had to go to a training session, so they spent another couple of hours learning how to do the job. And uh, these people are... You know, they're, they're paid, but they're not paid very much. They're volunteers. They do it out of uh, a sense of civic duty. And uh, they expressed to me uh, how disappointed they were that, that um, you know, so few people showed up. Um, you know, I don't know why people didn't show up. I don't know if they didn't know about the election or if they knew about it and uh, didn't care. And I don't know if they didn't care because they don't care or if they didn't care because they felt that the two candidates were equally qualified and it wasn't that important to them which candidate won. Um, but uh, the fact is that uh, citywide, only 3.38% of eligible voters showed up for this election. And uh, the city clerk's office today couldn't tell me exactly how much it cost because they don't have all the numbers yet. But I know before they, they talked about it costing over $30,000, I think. Um, so it, it's uh, $30,000 that uh, we don't necessarily have to, uh, to spend. Uh, plus, uh, the, the, the people who man the polls uh, are spending a, a lot of time uh, doing this. And... Um, so the, the poll workers asked me, was, isn't there some better way we could do this? And um, I don't know. I don't know if there is or not. I know that a lot of people feel very strongly that the only way to select, to elect people is to have a, an election where all the voters have a chance to express uh, their vote. Um, it is, uh, you know, it, I, I wanted to acknowledge the... Uh, the people who talked to me about it and, and wondered if uh, if there's some alternative way to select a replacement during a, a short term until a regular election could occur. And uh, so I don't know what the answer is, but I'll be looking into it. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, is, is I'm sure you all have received a lot of complaints about potholes. And uh, I, I'm the liaison to the Board of Public Works, um, and uh, I, I conveyed my uh, uh, the fact that people had complained about potholes to them, and and they've gone through the explanation. It's on the website. Uh, you've all heard it a, a million times about how potholes are created, and during the winter, there's not a whole lot we can do about it uh, other than patch. Uh, because it's cold, it's a cold patch, and it doesn't last very long. So it's, a, it's not a good solution until the weather improves when more permanent repairs can be made. Um, but some people have, at, have said that uh, th their cars have suffered damage as a result of the potholes. And I wanted to make sure the people knew 
that um, you can report potholes to the, the, the Department of Public Works has a, uh, a place that you can online go to dpwrequest at nashuanh.gov and re report a pothole. You can also call them at 589-4797. Uh, and there's also, a, if you go on the website, you'll, you'll find uh, a nice little chart. It's at your, Y-O-U-R, G-O-V dot uh, cartograph, C-A-R-T-E-G-R-A-P-H dot com. And it's a little map, and you can... Um, you can, on this little map with your cursor, pinpoint where you say there's a pothole and, uh, and click it, and it automatically reports it to the, uh, the Department of Public Works. I did it this weekend, uh, and uh, I got an acknowledgement that, uh, that, that my report had been received, and um, hopefully that'll translate into a, the, the, those potholes being filled. But I wanted people to know about that. And you can also, if you suffer damage, you can also report it to the, uh, uh, the city uh, risk management department uh, that uh, you can make a claim that way. Um, I also wanted to comment, you know, I, as a new alderman, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly uh, amazed at how fast things happen here. Um, and, um, and, uh, and I'm sure people watching have, have uh, kind of wondered themselves what, what just happened. And, uh, but I wanted people to know we, we just uh, awarded a contract, a KRT, a KRT appraisal, to do a reevaluation. And I've had uh, concerns expressed to me about the reevaluation. And I wanted to take this opportunity to try to explain. And uh, if I don't do it well enough, Mayor, I'm sure you'll uh, uh, correct me. Uh, but the city has to to uh, revalue the properties every five years, and um, to do a true reevaluation would be hiring a company to come in and visit every property in the city, uh, inside and outside, to de to determine. Uh, how that value might have changed over the years. Uh, that is a very expensive process, millions of dollars it would cost. Uh, so instead of doing that, we are doing, which is perfectly acceptable and is something that we've done for, for uh, years now, it's a, st a statistical uh, reevaluation where we hire a company, this KRT appraisals, is going to look at... Um, at uh, all the properties in town and uh, reevaluate them according to c recent sales, comparable sales, they, they, they're called. And so if your property has been appraised at, let's say, 200,000 and uh, similar houses like yours in your neighborhood have sold for 300,000 because the values have gone up, this company is going to say, revalue your property based upon those comparable sales at, at a higher amount. Um, the problem that the mayor has pointed out is that for residential properties, we have lots of information about sales. Uh, during the past year, there have been lots of sales, and they can compare your property to recent sales of similar properties and determine pretty accurately what your property is worth, uh, what the fair market value of your, of your property is worth today in today's market. With commercial properties, however, the, the information is not so readily available because there haven't been many sales of commercial properties. So the mayor is afraid that while the residential properties are going to be increased in value because of this new information, that commercial properties are going to stay the same because we don't have a lot of information about sales. So he's proposed, and, uh, and this company, this KRT, is going to, to do this. They're going to look at commercial properties and revalue them 
not based upon sales, because there's not a lot of information about sales, but rather based upon their income value. How much are they renting their properties from? Or how much are similar properties being rented for? And to determine uh, their value based upon their rental income. And this appraisal company and the mayor feel that this would be a more accurate uh, valuation of commercial properties. And hopefully the difference between residential and commercial won't be so different uh, so that when we finish the reevaluation, it'll be more accurate and fairer to, uh, to everybody. Unfortunately, uh, reports uh, in the newspapers, the local National Telegraph and the Manchester Union Leader have, uh, have featured this uh, idea that um, that residential property values may go up um, in the union leader, they said 20%. So I've had a lot of calls and a lot of concerns expressed to me about our taxes going up 20%. And I, and I wanted to take this opportunity to explain that even though the, the value of properties may go up, uh, in an ideal world, uh, taxes should not change. The property values might go up, but when you divide uh, the tax, the, the budget, by, that, by all of those property values, and uh, if all the property values go up, the tax rate, in fact, will go down. And um, so even though your property value may go up, if your tax rate goes down, in an ideal world, your taxes shouldn't change. Uh, but the mayor is anticipating, because of this difference between residential and commercial that I talked about, that the residential properties may experience a higher burden, uh, a higher share of the, uh, of the budget, and the tax burden as a result. And, um, but hopefully, uh, with this uh, valuation process, uh, that won't happen. And uh, the mayor has already proposed a budget which is less than what the, the spending cap uh, would allow. And he's trying to keep the taxes down. So we don't, at this point in time, we don't know what the taxes are going to be. We don't know what the budget's going to be. So we don't know what the taxes are going to be. And we don't know if they're going to go up or not. Um, but uh, uh, I wanted to, uh, give that explanation. I don't know if I did a very good job or not, but uh, please correct me if I, if I didn't do it, uh, Mayor. And the, the last thing I wanted to explain is we, we just passed a um, tax increment financing district uh, in, the, uh, in the river, the area around the Nashua River. Um, and I, I wanted to explain to people that this is a financing district we're anticipating, uh, you know, we've adopted a, uh, a riverfront uh, master plan uh, to, uh, to make a lot of improvements along the river. The river is an asset that this city has. It's a gem that we want to take advantage of. And so the, the master plan is proposing a lot of improvements along the river. And, um, the question of how we're going to pay for that uh, comes up. And so we've implemented this tax increment financing uh, district in the riverfront area, uh, where though that area, um, we're establishing kind of a base uh, tax value or tax assessment value for those properties. And um, as the, the uh, uh, as those properties increase in value, uh, that, that value, that increased value is going to be uh, the, the taxes that we get from that increased value are going to be used to help pay for the improvements in, in that area. And um, it, uh, it deserves a lot longer explanation, but I just wanted to give people, uh, people who may not have seen the 
the Planning and Economic Development Committee's um, the presentation that was made there and may not understand what that was all about. Uh, I just wanted to give them a, uh, an inkling as to what, why we did that and how this is going to enable us to make improvements to the riverfront area um, and uh, in, 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 uh, increase the, uh, the value. And after those improvements are paid for, the, uh, the tax increment financing district can be terminated and the increased value in that area will, the, uh, the taxes from that will return to the general fund and benefit the city uh, as a whole. Thank you. Older woman, yeah. Melissa Goldia. Thank you. Um, just um, in comment to add to something about the election, I also heard some of the comments probably um, Alderman Jetty heard about how we do this. Um, but the other thing I heard from people was that they felt like there wasn't um, good communication with the community about the um, election even happening. And um, that, you know, someone said to me, well, it wasn't in the paper until Tuesday morning. Um, someone else commented that maybe we could have put it on channel 16. So I think that just we need to also look at how we communicate these unusual out of out of timeline, expected timeline kinds of elections. Um, two things that I just wanted to remind people about. I don't know if all of you received an email from NRPC regarding a transportation survey. If you did, I hope you will complete it. And I hope you will also pass it along via Facebook, email, word of mouth, however um, it works best for you so we can get as many responses to that survey as possible. And um, the last thing, again, transportation related, is that Tuesday, August 3rd, the um, New Hampshire DOT will be here regarding the widening of the Everett Turnpike. They'll be up in the auditorium from 5 to 7 p.m. with an, an open house so you can just come up and look at what they're proposing to do and ask questions. And then they'll be doing a formal presentation at 7 p.m. And what, all of what, these are public. What date was that? It's Tuesday, April 3rd August. at 7 p.m. I thought I heard you say August 3rd. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> if I did. <laughs> <laughs> no way, do I, want to, notice, no way do I want to get to <laughs> August this quickly. Um, April 3rd, I'm sorry. Yes, so once again, it's a, a public event. Um, I would encourage members of the public who are interested to come. And the proposed widening is from exit 8 north to, I believe, um, the 293 interchange. So um, those of us who have driven that way during rush hour either you know, morning or afternoon, understand the importance of that. So um, once again, everyone is invited to attend. Thank you. Alderman O'Brien. Yeah, thank you. Um, on that, what um, the alderman brought up, <clears throat> I too received a flyer, but it's interesting to note. Uh, they said in Bedford they were going to tape it, but they didn't say a taping here in Nashua. And perhaps if... Uh, our uh, assistant could look into that because maybe uh, it would behoove the citizens that cannot make the meeting that they can see it in the future on the tape. Further remarks by members of the board? Alderwoman Clee? Oh. Yes, um, I, I too got a lot of the um, comments about the election and I, I think many of them wanted us to change our charter and so on um, as to how we go about when we have less than a year to go. I think they just need a little bit more understanding. And I also think that uh, you're right. We need to um, kind of transmit the information a little bit better. Um, but what I wanted to talk about also is that this weekend I attended the Nashua Challenge of the Badges. And I would like to congratulate the police department on a good win and um, a great effort by our firefighters. It was, I'm not a basketball person and I really had a good time. <laughs> I didn't think I would, but there was a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, exciting little plays and so on, but they all did a great job. And there was the cutest little dancer during the halftime program. 
Alderman Tenza, did you have your hand up? I did, just, just briefly, just to touch on one thing that um, Alderman Jetty mentioned before, just about the speed at which things happen here at the meetings. And I think um, one of the things that the city does a very good job of is keeping minutes uh, of the committee meetings. Uh, and uh, I'll just point out, I think, uh, a lot of the work and questioning uh, of these bills, uh, ordinances, resolutions, happens at the at the committee level. Um, so I don't want people to think that uh, we're people aren't uh, doing their jobs before we're, we're voting on these things. And I don't believe that anyone does. But um, those meetings are also available for people, and the minutes are available for people to to review uh, either before uh, these meetings. Uh, the Board of Alderman meetings, uh, or uh, to even come to those committee meetings for public comment. Uh, so I think there's ample opportunity for people to comment on uh, all the proposed resolutions and ordinances. Uh, the only other thing I'll, I'll say is for the folks who are celebrating Easter this weekend, uh, I just want to wish everyone here uh, and in the city a happy Easter. I hope you have a great day with your families. Other remarks, Alderman Dowd? Yes, I just wanted to mention that the uh, Budget Committee is evaluating the Mayor's budget. We've had a couple of meetings so far, and many other meetings scheduled. The schedule uh, is on the website, and the entire Mayor's budget uh, is on the website if anybody wants to get on and, and take a look at it. Um, the schedule, uh, while I would like it to be locked in concrete, is not quite that solid. Um, I found out tonight we're scheduled for the Board of Old, uh, Board of Education's budget. Uh, I believe it's the second, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I don't think they're ready. We won't know till tomorrow night. So I would uh, keep an eye on the schedule. I will let all the budget committee members know uh, that that the uh, schedule changes if it changes. Um, but the schedule is also available online for anyone that would like to see when the budget meetings are. Further remarks? Um, with respect to Alderman Jetty's question about the election, um, the, the process of having special elections is, is recent. For the previous 100 years or so, um, the process was that the board, either this board or the Board of Education, got to elect um, members to fill in for unexpired terms. And in my humble opinion, in that 100 years, the world did not end because of that process, nor did we spend $30,000 on a special election. So you might want to start by looking there at a, at a mechanism to go back to. Committee announcements? Alderman Lizzie Gall, yeah. Yes. Um, strategic planning is meeting Tuesday, April 3rd, and um, Ms. Lovering has told me we do have a quorum, and we will be meeting at 530 in room 208, which um, my hope is that that will then allow people an opportunity at 7 o'clock to go up to the presentation. So strategic planning Tuesday, April 3rd, 530 in room 208. Alderman O'Brien. Yes, infrastructure, uh, Wednesday, tomorrow night, uh, the 28th, 7 p.m. in the automatic chamber. All are welcomed. Alderman Karen. There'll be no personnel meeting next Monday due to uh, budget committee meeting that date. Further committee announcements? Is there a motion? Alderman Wilshire. Adjourn. Motion is to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And we are adjourned at 8.18.